a frustrating road trip that uh, we had our chances and opportunities and we weren't able to get it done. Um, you know, obviously, Cal playing at a very high level, and I thought Stanford, uh, in particular in the second half or senior day, uh, played extremely well. And we just weren't able to get the defensive stops, and that's kind of been the theme song all year. And now we go into this last week before we get into the conference tournament that obviously is going to have uh, a huge bearing on our season. Um, we got to get better, and we've got two really good opportunities to try to do that this week. And I uh, had a good practice yesterday, and hopefully have another good one today. Um, but we've obviously got a very, very good team coming in here on Wednesday in Oregon. How's the mindset of the team? It's been really good. You know, I'm frustrated. You know, because I thought we were playing some pretty good basketball, and to lose those lose those two games last week, um, coaches were frustrated, players were frustrated. We just weren't able to get the job done. So. That always hurts, um, and now you're into March, you know. So now the opportunities are running thin and few. So you got to make the most of those. We got a top ten team coming into our building uh, tomorrow, and so it's a huge opportunity. And we have struggled defensively. Uh, we know we've got some young, inexperienced parts, um, and we're trying to learn. And the urgency of of having defensive efficiency for 40 minutes has just been something that this group has really struggled with, and. Now we get probably the, the toughest assignment in Oregon because they play small ball a lot, they play mismatch ball a lot, so they put a lot of pressure uh, on your defense. And I think that's what we need. You know, before we get into conference tournament play, we need to, to have that experience. So we're looking at that as, as a positive, and we're going to get a really good offensive team thrown at us, and we're going to see if we can grow this week defensively. After the game, Bryce said that he thought some guys weren't on the same page in the locker room. Do, do you agree with that? Well, you know, I think I think Bryce frustrated. You know, he's one of the leaders on the team. Um, we're all frustrated after a game and losing. So I, I don't know if it's that the guys weren't on the same page. Now, when you lose, you know, obviously you're probably not on the same page. It's probably a reason that um, you know whether it be a defensive assignment or what we're trying to do offensively. Um, that makes it difficult, but I don't think it was that you know the player A wasn't on the same page as player B or player C on what the on what the assignment or what we wanted to get done. Now, did everybody execute it? No. And for that, you've got a lot of guys that I'm sure are frustrated and feel like they're on different pages. It's what happens when you lose. When you win, you know you feel like everybody's the puzzle's right and everybody's on the same page. What's at stake in these last two games of the regular season, given that there's not a lot of moving you can do in the standings? Yeah, you know, we really haven't looked to see what happens if we win one, two, you know, what, what that does anywhere. We just know going into the conference tournament, which is season three uh, in our minds, you get a clean slate. And whether you got to win three games or four games, you know, I've been a part of, uh, I've been a part of five conference tournament champions. Um, you know, so I've been a part of winning four games in four days uh, at Iowa, and we finished seventh or eighth in the league. So it can happen, uh, and so we just got to get better. And we've only got about three practices and two games to do that in. So that's the benefits of this week and what we're trying to do. Yeah, we got Senior Day, you know, honoring Tony and some managers and that kind of thing. But even the bigger picture is how can we get better in the next 80 minutes of play. And we know we're playing an Oregon team that's trying to win a conference title. We're playing an Oregon State team that's right there trying to make the next step. You know, so we're going to get two really good shots. And if we can handle those two shots this week, we gain a little bit of momentum then going into the conference tournament. If you guys don't end up making the tournament, would you accept an NIT berth for that? We're not even. Yeah, right now, I mean, that's a question for down the road if it happens, but it's hypothetical right now. I mean, it's. We're driven to do what we've got to do, and we know we've got two legit opportunities this week uh, that are on our schedule, and we're promised one game the following week. And if we're going to play any more games the following week, we got to win. And But this, I think there's a lot of parity in this league. If you look at this league, um, you've got even teams at the top of this league that have struggled away from home. And so there's a lot of teams that have struggled away from home. And our issues this year have not been really road. We would have liked to have won more road games, obviously. But we didn't take care of home, and had we taken care of home, we'd be right in the middle of all this, and, uh, and we didn't take care of home. So we got two last opportunities to take care of home, uh, and then we go to a conference tournament that I think, as good and as deep as this league is, there's a lot of parity. And there's not much 
there's a lot of wiggle room from one all the way to 12 that anything can happen. So is it harder to win four and four than three and three? Yeah. But you know, I've been part of teams that have done that in the past. And this is a team that if we can gain some momentum this week, that's all we're thinking about is then going to Vegas and trying another opportunity that we have. You guys are 2-0 against uh, top 10 teams at home this year, uh, the last one being Arizona. Since, since that Arizona win, where do you think you've seen improvement and where have you been disappointed? Well, I think the improvement has come with handling the basketball and our assist turnover. You know, we're right near the top when it comes to offensive efficiency. You know, we, we've done a lot of good things that way. I think our, from shot selection to how we handle the ball um, to scoring, that's been pretty good. Um, I think where the issues have been in the last 10 games, I think, what, three and seven in the last 10 games, it's been at the defensive end. And it hasn't been for 40 minutes. It's been understanding you're down six, now you get a score, you can need two stops in a row. And we just haven't been able to do that. We haven't understood the toughness and the things that needs to go into play, um, the urgency of defensive stops and putting together two, three, four stops in a row that allows your offense to get on a run and get some momentum. Uh, and I think that's where the negatives have been and things we're trying to work on. What would you say to Swage fans who aren't happy with the way that the season has gone? Well, we're not happy. <laughs> you know, so I'm right there with them. Uh, you know, there's not, I don't think, a player in the locker room. There's not a coach on our staff that, you know, is happy that you know, we're, what, 6-10 and 10 and in league play and we're 15 and 14 overall. That's not what we aspired to. Now, we know we played a very difficult schedule. We, I've said it, that I think the schedule came a year too early for us, uh, but it's what, was, it's what happened. And, you know, we, I think five games we've lost by one possession. You know, so three of them in league play. So, you know, if you could just get those, you know, that's the difference of where we're at now versus what, 20, 20 and nine and, and nine and seven. That's how close you are, uh, but close doesn't get it. You know, it's still the reality. We're 15 and 14 and six and 10, and that's not where we aspire to be. That's not where we want to be, but that is what we are. How can we get better? How can we finish the season um, and do well and try to turn a negative into a positive? But uh, trust me, we're not happy at where we're sitting either. Um, you know, and we've got we've to gotta continue to work, continue to grind, and continue to try to improve. What do you think has, has uh, I guess, been the cause of that, the defensive progress that you haven't seen? What it's do you a, think the it's a great question. Uh, and I think it, fundamentally, we do some good things. Fundamentally, then we struggle, and it's really, as I mentioned before, it's a 40-minute deal. It's understanding it's just four-minute increments. You got to do it five times. There's five four-minute games, a half, and you just got to you got to get defensive stops through each four-minute game. And we have too many breakdowns to where we'll have four-minute game where we're giving up 10, 11, 12 points a game, uh, four-minute game, and we can't do that. Uh, it's got to be around six or seven every four-minute game, and there's too many probably two or three in the first half, then another two in the second half, or vice versa, it ends up being five out of 10 where we're getting up 10 or more. That's hard to recover from unless you're scoring 90 points a game. And so I, I think that's been our issue, is just consistently being efficient enough defensively. And um, we just haven't been able to do that. How much of the 40 minute consistency do you think has to do with that obviously Norman's not here this year and there's less backcourt depth and maybe that leads to some of the breakdowns on some possessions? Yeah, and not just Norman, but a one and done in Kavan. You know, Kavan, you know, you didn't have to run offense through Kavan. Kavan was talented. Kavan got his stuff off the backboard. Kavan got his stuff in transition. And Kavan was a long, really good, active defender. And then you had Norman, who was a big guard defender. We really don't, I think the, the thing that's missing is having that. You know, Caban wasn't experienced, but you're looking at a one and done that was playing our four spot. We don't have a one and done in our four spot this year, and we don't have that big guard. You know, we're we're asking Isaac to do a lot. You know, Isaac's our leading scorer, and we're asking him to, hey, by the way, guard the guy that's six seven, six eight, the other team's big guard, and we just don't have that big guard. And and I think those are those are the areas that have, and, and we don't have that, you know, really dominant rim protector where. You know, I think you're going to see Tom continue to grow and develop defensively. You're seeing that. Uh, Tony's never been a rim protector as far as shot blocker and that kind of thing. So if we get beat on the perimeter, we're not getting a lot of that support in at the rim. So all that comes into play when you're looking at the defensive side of it. And, you know, Norman and, and Kavan had a lot to do with that. In that 3-4 spot, they were really good. 
defensively for us, and I think that's we weren't near as probably maybe a little bit more efficient offensively this year than what we were a year ago, but much better defensively. Last year's team was much better defensively.